Hi everyone and a warm welcome to QuantPy. In the previous videos we derived the Black-Scholes PDE using the delta hedging arguments and then we subsequently transformed it into the heat equation, which in the stochastic world is known as a diffusion equation. We also transformed the terminal conditions for a call option. By terminal condition we mean the option payoff at maturity or big T. We applied the following transformations to travel from the Black-Scholes PDE to the heat equation. Now, we are going to use the solution of the diffusion equation to solve the transformed Black-Scholes PDE. Exciting! And once we have solved this equation, we will then apply the transformations in reverse order to get to the Black-Scholes formula expressed in terms of the original variables. We won't dive into the transformations just yet. But we'll bring them back to the table when we have solved the PDE equation. If we have a diffusion equation subject to initial conditions, then we know its fundamental solution is as follows. We owe you the derivation of this solution, and we will cover it in a follow up video, but for now, assume we know this solution like the back of our hand. In our PDE, d is equal to sigma squared divided by 2. So the solution must look like this. The plus sign in the exponent means this expression only counts when it is positive. Same thing as the maximum of the expression and zero, which we've seen in the option payoff. Cancelling the twos, we get. Now, the expression will be non-negative only when the exponential of z is greater than k. And applying log to both sides. We see that this means that the integral only counts when z is greater than the log of k. We expand the integral into two different expressions. And now we solve them one at a time. We start with the second expression because it is simpler and it will get us into the swing of things. We see that the integrand is essentially the probability density of a normal with mean equal to x and variance equal to sigma squared times tau. Notice the integration is with respect to z, so x is like a constant. We change the sign inside the square to make it z minus x. Because square of minus 1 is 1, so it won't disturb anything. Next, we already know from probability how to standardize a normal. We simply subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation and represent the standard variable by capital letter Z, which gives us the familiar variable with mean 0 and variance equal to 1. We rearrange to give small z in terms of the standard normal, again familiar formula from probability, so the integral essentially represents the probability of z being greater than the log of k. We substitute in the expression for z, and then isolate capital letter Z on the left hand side, and we obtain the probability of the standard normal taking value larger than the expression on the right hand side of the inequality. The standard normal is symmetric about zero, so the probability of Z being larger than this expression is the same as a probability of Z being smaller than the negative of this expression, so we get. And if we represent the distribution of the standard normal by phi, then it becomes. Multiplying this expression by minus k gives us the second expression, so we get. If you would rather not go down the normal distribution route, you can take the variables transformation route and arrive at the same formula. The end result is simplified terms in the exponential. So we define a new variable as the square root of the term in the exponent and deliberately ignore the two for now. We also need to apply this transformation to the integrating variable as well as the lower and upper integration limits. First we take differential of both sides and we rearrange to get differential of z in terms of the differential of y. Now, the lower integration limit, which is log of k, becomes, and analogously, the upper integration limits. Now, substituting the four expressions into the integral, we get, and reversing the integration interval, 
we get the distribution of the standard normal as before. This alternative approach comes in really handy if you don't feel like playing with statistical distributions. By the way, we need to transform the variable x back into the stock price, but we are saving this for after we have simplified the first expression. So let's move on to the first expression. Now, we have the exponential of z as an additional term, which initially appears to ruffle things up a bit, but it really amounts to completing a square. Without further ado, let's combine the two exponentials. As x does not depend on the integrating variable, it is the least of our worries, so let's split it out. Now, the second term has got z, which depends on the integrating variable, so we need to simplify it. First, factor 2 out. And now we see that if we add the square of the term inside the brackets, then we get a complete square. So we add this term in the second exponential and subtract it in the first exponential. Then we expand the square in the first exponential and do the opposite in the second exponential to get a complete square, so we get. We simplify the terms in the first exponential to get. As the terms in the first exponentials don't depend on the integrating variable, we can take the first exponential out of the integral to get. Now, the integrand is nothing but the density of a normal with mean equal to x plus sigma squared times tau and variance equal to sigma squared times tau. From earlier on in this video, we know how to write this in terms of the standard normal distribution, so we get. It is very similar to the first expression we saw earlier. We only have one extra term in the mean. So we have simplified both terms now. So let's reverse the transformations we applied in the previous video. First, substitute for f. Now, substitute for x. Remember from the previous video, we denoted the option price and the stock price with tilde before applying this transformation, so we get. Now, we see sigma squared everywhere, so let's simplify what we can. Now, we can shift the exponential to the right hand side, so we get. We know log and exponential are the inverse of each other, so exponential of log of s equals to s, and this is the Black-Scholes formula. The expressions inside the normal are essentially the famous d1 and d2 terms, which I'm pretty sure you began to suspect way before we reached the end of this video. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed the derivation and look forward to seeing you in the next.